Register in August for Synchronicity University and choose your own tuition rate. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of August 18, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out right now, and the energy changes dramatically, going from fire to earth. And this is all part of the divine setup. This is actually the beginning of all the fresh and fortunate energy coming up for us next week. It is gonna be late next week that we are going to have one of the more fortunate new moons that I have seen in a while, unleashing practical luck for all of us in at least one area of life. But before we get there, as I said, this is the divine setup. This is where the universe starts nudging us, starts putting things into place so that we can make the most of the bright new opportunities and the bright new beginnings coming around right around the corner. Now let's talk about what has been going on, right? Lots of fire energy, mainly Leo. We have had a Mercury retrograde season uh, since the middle of June that was moving in and out of the sign of Leo. Now that Mercury retrograde season officially ended last week. However, we had this difficult connection between Mercury and Uranus to end the week. Now that made for some very quick developments and surprises, but also frustration and uncertainty. Now it is as we navigate into the middle of this week that Mercury will speak in supreme harmony with Jupiter. This is going to transform that very energy that felt so uncertain, that felt so confusing. It will transform it into something that feels truly inspired. That very area of luck that was uncertain will now become an area where there is unlimited hope and a real sense of things changing for the better. There are blessings on offer here. And this is where we start to understand how sometimes it is by moving through unexpected and challenging moments, we end up strengthening ourselves that much more. With Mercury now, this week, spending its final week in the sign of Leo, after moving in and out of the sign of Leo for so long, it is gonna be now that a lot of the lessons, the larger learning of the Mercury retrograde season starts to come together. And I feel like there are gonna be a lot of people out there who feel like all of that, the last two months, all of that was worth it to get you to this place of massive blessing. Remember, it is Jupiter right now in a very strong position, newly forward, moving through its home sign of Sagittarius. It's able to bring forward its blessings that much more able to bring forward its expansive and most optimistic qualities that much more easily. Speaking with Mercury, Mercury is the planet of, of news, right? It's getting messages. It's hearing something, um, the news receiving us, the information arriving. And chances are, in at least one area of life, all of us are gonna feel as if the right information has come at the right time and it makes all the difference. It lifts us out of what was uncertain into much more stable and much more hopeful circumstances. But that's not all that's happening, of course. It is that so many planets this week, mainly Mars at the beginning of the week, and then midweek, it is Venus. And then as we move into the second half of the week, it'll be the sun. Well, these three planets are going to move into the sign of Virgo. Now this sets up a beautiful landscape. On the one hand, it sets it up for next week. Of course, we're gonna have all these Uranus trines. We're gonna have that very fortunate new moon. But this is also shifting our focus. The sign of Leo is one that is, uh, yes, it's fire. So of course it has that creative side, uh, that very self-actualizing side to it. But it is also a side that can be very passionate and instinctive. As much as the sign of Leo is a fixed sign, so it tends to hold its energy. Um, and that's also why it is a sign so connected with loyalty as well. At the same time though, there is a certain quickness to it, being that it is fire. Well, now the energy is going to change to mutable earth. 
and mutable is an energy of change. It, it tends to represent a time. And when we look at the mutable signs, they happen when a season is ending, a season is coming to a close. Uh, the sign of Virgo for the Northern Hemisphere, well, it is a time when the summer starts rounding up and coming to a close, where the later harvests start to take place. And it is a time of preparation as well, knowing that another beginning is coming up, the beginning of autumn, the autumn equinox right around the corner. And so we have here an energy that already is changeable. And then you add the earth element. There's a practicality here. What are we manifesting? What is it that after this period of time when there was this heightened energy of heat, right? The heightened power of the sun that took place at the height of summer in the Northern Hemisphere. Where is it now that we are? How did we make the most of it? And how is it that we can use the energy that's left, the summer that's left, so that we have taken this season and used it to our fullest advantage. That is part of the energy that we are now going to move into. The other layer of understanding of this energy as well, well, you think about the sign of Virgo, it is about details, right? It is about uh, honing in, understanding nuances, looking at a situation from not just this inspired, uh, elevated sense, but rather getting into the nitty gritty and understanding what it is that can be understood from all kinds of angles, from all kinds of perspectives. Now, I actually think that this can be really beneficial in all kinds of ways. Uh, the sign of Leo can be very much about the self, very much about leadership, but it is the sign of Virgo that understands that we're all doing this together, we're all in it together, and when you look at something from different angles, you need all those different perspectives. It is ultimately all those hands, all those minds coming together that fit into a divine tapestry. And it is that divine tapestry, the way in which it comes together, um, the way in which it creates a beautiful whole that ultimately represents us, us as humanity. And so it is the sign of Virgo that asks us, yes, to pay attention to the smaller areas, but that we are not small, that together, we are truly magnificent. And that sometimes by paying attention to what's happening on a smaller scale though, we make the whole that much stronger. Now it is the sign of Virgo that is also one of expertise, whereas the sign of Leo is one of confidence and bravado um, and standing up and being able to say, you know what, I am worthy of shining and being seen. That has its value. But at the same time, there's a lot of value to be had in saying, look what I can do, look what I have done, look what I've done repeatedly. And it is in what we do repeatedly again and again that we gain mastery. And that's why the sign of Virgo is also the energy of expertise. Now, this is part of the divine setup that is going to lend itself to big breakthroughs and new opportunities for all of us in at least one area of life once we get into next week. So this week is a time to connect with an understanding of what it is that we do well, because we have done it again and again. We've proven to ourselves that we do it well because we've put in the time, because we have put in the practice. It is those who have put in that time that are going to make the greatest gains once we get into next week. There are times when confidence will get you really far you saying that you can, you saying you're the best can get you really far. But there are times when that will only go so far. What is it now that you know you can do with great mastery? Because you have done it. And so it is going to be that very expertise, that mastery. It is going to be the details, right? That is ultimately going to reap the greatest reward once we get you into next week. So Mars enters the sign of Virgo as we start this week. And so we're motivated to put in the time. We're motivated to practice. Love is a practice, right? Love, yes, it can be a concept. It can be one of heart. If you think about it, the entire zodiac is a different expression of love. If that is what our truest nature is, if we are the manifestation of an energy of love, of an energy of creation, 
then all the zodiac represents a different shade, a different nuance, a different understanding of love. It is the sign of Leo that is the inherent worthiness of love. Now, it is the sign of Virgo that says, what do you love to do? Where does your love show up in your smallest moments, in your habitual moments? And how is it that we can make love a routine? Well, with Mars, there's also passion, right? There's that desire, that determination to do a thing well. And understanding that, is it worth doing? Well, if it is, then we're going to give it our all. And that's what Mars represents. It is this wholeness of understanding of who we are is represented in the glyph of Mars. This completion, we in and of ourselves are whole and complete, and we can act from that place of completion. Well, where it is that we can give our whole self to a task with focus, then we will be able to execute that with great precision and determination. Now, Venus is going to move into this part of the sky as well. And one way that this energy has been understood, you know, I, I think Venus in the sign of Virgo can get a bit of a bad rep um, because it can be picky right? It is about looking at the, the nuances and the details and understanding with more precision uh, where it is that love is showing up. However, love, again, is in the small moments. It is in the details. Is it in what you do that you bring great love? Is it in those smallest moments when we're focused on the task at hand that we can also bring heart, that we can also bring love? Is it that we love those small moments of our life? Is it that we are doing something repeatedly where we are cultivating a spirit of love or not? And where it comes to romantic love, is it being shown in the details as well? You know, it's one thing to say that you love someone. It's another thing to show it. And to show it in those small moments makes love that much more powerful, to make love a routine, to make love a sacred ritual that you practice again and again and again can only fortify that love. And that is part of what Venus moving to the sign of Virgo reminds us of. At the same time though, I really like this energy because I feel like it is so earth goddess, right? That's what I always think when I think of Venus in the sign of Virgo. It is an embodied love. It is a love that can be felt in all of our pores, in all of our experience. It is a love that shows up for us, that asks us to give ourselves and to see that there is love playing out in those small, sometimes unconscious moments that we do. It is actually in those small moments that can show us how much love is there for self or others. Those small moments can be more revealing than the big declarations, than the big showy statements. It is in those small moments that we see the truth of where love is. And of course, once we get later into the week with the sun moving into the sign of Virgo, well, that means the Virgo birthday month begins. So happy birthday to all the Virgos out there. It will be late in the week when Venus meets Mars in the sky. Now, this is a really big deal. Uh, this meeting happens in the sky about once every two years, and it is always a very romantic time uh, given the direction in which the sky is headed as we head into next week uh, the element of surprise and freedom found in love is going to be that much more heightened but at least for this week and as we move later and later into the week there is this bringing together of the active part of love and the receptive part of love the more passionate, uh, more forward-moving part of connecting with another person and the part of us that knows that we are worthy to receive, that allows ourselves to welcome love in. When these two planets get together, it does represent a time when love energy all around is that much more heightened. There tends to be this mix between body and heart as well. So that is something to keep in mind. Our expressions of love 
can carry a, a certain passion with them and our expressions of passion can carry a lot of love in them as well. Now, some of this will be uh, you know, negated a little bit thanks to Uranus next week. So we'll be able to keep that little bit of perspective, right? Because sometimes love may not be love. Sometimes it's just lust. But that's okay. Maybe I shouldn't say it's just lust because it has its own uh, experience. It is its own part of the human experience. But yeah, this energy, it's quite sultry and it's quite exciting. And this can be a time when a lot of us are um, that much more motivated to connect with another person and that much more willing to see how the details are an expression of love that much more willing to acknowledge that sometimes we don't need those big declarations. Sometimes being able to understand the nuances is enough to warm our hearts and to help us to feel close to another person. What I love about this week for us, I mean, there is so much here, but really I just love how the energy is going to shift. It is going to change. It's not so much about just what we're showing to the world, which is a beautiful thing, but it is about what we are going to show ourselves. Are we showing ourselves love? Are we showing ourselves passion and drive and commitment for the things that we want to do, the things that we enjoy to do? Is there a way that we can live more loving moments in all of our moments? And is there a way to bring conviction and determination to those small tasks? Where it is that we are willing to summon courage, the courage of Mars, and where it is that we are willing to summon the faith of Venus, because Venus can be quite the energy filled with faith. If you think about it, self-love and knowing that you are worthy, that you don't have to go after what you want or fight for what you want, but rather you alone are enough. You existing, allowing it to come is enough to have whatever it is that you desire, whatever beauty, whatever growth that you desire. That is a position of faith. That is a faith in yourself. Well, where is it that we can see that playing out in our lives? Where is it that we can see ourselves, summon our courage, summon our sacred will and exert it with wisdom, but at the same time know that we don't have to if we don't want to, that where we are right now and what it is that we are showing ourselves is the validation. It is the love that we are looking for. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I absolutely love reading you guys. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful energy this week, how all this change of planets into a brand new part of the sky, how Mars meeting Venus, well, how all of that is going to speak to you and your sign, well, you can log on to NadiaShaw.com, sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I have a couple of quick announcements I have to say. You may remember if you've been watching me for a while, September 1st is always my anniversary, right? I launched my website September 1st at midnight 2006 and that was my, uh, my declaration to the universe that this is what I'm doing now. And that was the launch of my uh, full-time professional astrology career. And uh, that was 13 years ago, right around the corner. And like literally two weeks from now, is going to be my anniversary. Every anniversary, I always have like a big sale, lots of surprises. This year, really big surprises are in the works. If you want to take advantage of some of the really big discounts that I offer that day, please do be sure to join my newsletter. It is through the newsletter that there are all kinds of special links available so that you can have access to those. And I'll do something online somewhere. I don't know if it'll be live on Facebook or live on YouTube, but somewhere I will do something uh, to celebrate with you guys because it's always so much fun celebrating my anniversary with you. 
and Synchronicity University is right around the corner. I'm really looking forward to that as well. The autumn session is starting in October. However, um, it is until the end of this month, so just two more weeks left uh, for you to take advantage of the choose your own tuition rate. And so this is something that was hugely popular last uh session over summer school thank you so much to everybody who registered for that thank you to the people who have already registered for the next session the autumn session uh, the choose your own tuition rate is going to be valid right to the end of the month and into september 1st so i'm actually going to extend that for the anniversary sale you can choose your own tuition rate right to the anniversary sale but of course you can register now um, and that is available to you and we've got lots of amazing classes coming up five classes plus a bonus class uh, we've got jupiter through the signs and houses We've got Pluto through the signs and houses. We've got two astrological magic classes leading up to Halloween. So that's going to be really fun as well, as well as an introduction to electional astrology, which is the astrology of choosing the best date for whatever it is that you do, uh, whether it's a wedding or starting a new business. These are the types of things that we are going to be talking about for that class. Now, all of these subjects were chosen by students of Synchronicity University. Um, and so I hope that you enjoy them I think we're going to learn so much and again I'm going to take a really practical approach especially when we look at Jupiter and Pluto I will go through each of the signs each of the houses so you can understand how Jupiter is speaking to you in your natal chart the only prerequisite for this uh, particular session the autumn session is my book astrology realized if you have that knowledge you'll be able to keep up no problem for the astrological magic classes uh, if you haven't already I would invite you to uh, make sure to get astrological uh, magic part one that i taught over summer school that will give you a really good foundation to get started and to build on for the next two astrology astrological magic classes and in-person events coming up i will be in baltimore in two weeks can you believe it in just two weeks i'm going to be in baltimore with the NCGR conference. Um, it is uh, truly with world-class astrologers. If you're anywhere near Baltimore, you're going to want to join. And I would invite you to do so. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And also in January 2020, under the light of the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, I will be, as part of a cruise event, I will be one of a few different teachers uh, that is going to be participating in this a truly rare and exceptional experience. It's love, joy, hope, and transformation, um, and a transformational journey at that. I'll be teaching, I'll be participating, and I have seen how being out of your comfort zone, and in this case, being in the middle of the ocean, stopping at key stops in Mexico and in the Bahamas, um, but being out there, right? There is something truly magical that happens by being out of your comfort zone being in the middle of water, all that symbol of emotion. Uh, my hope is to be some small part of facilitating a transformative experience for participants and for myself as well. So I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you so much to everybody who has already signed up and you can learn more about this as well. Uh, log on, use the links below and uh, hopefully I will see you on board. And thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to my premiere people. I'm going to be sure to do the premiere this time this week. And I always have fun with you guys. Thank you to the replay people who are watching this as well. And again, remember, September 1st, the big day. That is when uh, I always like to do something special. And I will be live online somewhere. Not sure where yet but I will be live online to celebrate uh, with all of you and with some amazing announcements. That September 1st is right after the new moon. Uh, and so I, uh, considering what a great new moon it is, I'm gonna be tapping into that energy with announcing new things. And uh, I would invite you to contemplate and consider the same. What new thing could you launch and you want lots of lucky energy behind it? This new moon coming up at the end of the month has a lot of very lucky energy. So tap into that in some way, but also stay open because sometimes the universe has an even better plan for us than anything we could have even imagined for ourselves. And thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.